Hey guys, today we're going to build this slide. Now this slide shows a metric, which is the return on equity for the global banking industry. And it shows two forecasts, one bull case, which is the optimistic case, and one bear case, which is the pessimistic case. Now you'll see that the dates are a little bit old. The actuals only go to 2016, after which time it's a forecast. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still quite useful to show how we would approach building a slide that shows two different forecasts. As you can see, the data is structured pretty reasonably. We have the first column, which is the year. Then we have uh, some actuals. So these are real data uh, up to 2016. Then after that, we have two forecasts. We have a bull case and a bear case. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of that data. And let's start by inserting our line chart. So I'll click on insert elements line. Now I typically start by just resizing the line chart and dropping the data in. Obviously the data here is formatted differently than in our uh, Excel file. I'm just gonna hit this button here, which says transpose sheet. And now I'll drop the data in. Next thing you'll notice is part of our data is actually in, the, in one of the label columns. So I'm just gonna press insert and shift it all over. Now you can see our data is in the uh, in the PowerPoint slide. I like to delete most of the labels and start with a really blank canvas. So I'm going to hold uh, Control and click on these three labels. Hit Delete. And the first thing we'll notice is there's a big gap here. That's an easy fix. All we need to do is add a couple of data points in our two forecasts: eight point six, eight point six. And you'll see there that now the lines have joined up quite nicely. Okay, so let's format these uh, these lines. So I'm going to hold Control and click on the three lines. I'm going to change the thickness to two and a half points. Looks a bit better. I'll re-select all of these. I'll right-click now and click Set to Smooth Line. I think the smooth line looks a little nicer, and because we're going to have labels um, on the data points, it's not, it's not completely important that you can see exactly where these data points sit on both of the axes, because you know they're, they're gonna be labeled. So that's a good start. Looking at this, the colors look a little strange. I think for the actuals, it makes sense to have a neutral color. So let's just do a gray. And then we'll have, because we have two cases, one that's optimistic and one that's pessimistic, we should make the optimistic one green and the pessimistic one red. Now we'll add the labels onto the line. Um, I'm going to click on the first line, right click and hit add point labels. I'll do that for the other two lines as well. Cool. Obviously the labels aren't exactly formatted the right way. So I'm holding control and selecting all of the labels. And this is a percentage, and we also want the at least one decimal place. So I'm going to type in 1.0%. There we go. I think also we can do a couple of things here. One is we'll drag these labels below the line. So there's more of a space. And there's actually three labels sitting under this 8.6, because if you remember correctly, we have three 8.6s. So I tend to just delete those now. One, two, there we go. All right, so there's a lot of labels here and they're not all particularly relevant. Really the main one we're trying to, um, the, actually the main few we're trying to kind of show are the last points and the 8.6. I'd say they're the most important ones. So we're gonna delete some labels, but we'll make sure that we keep at least those ones in and probably some other ones as well. So let's try and neaten this one up and I'll delete those labels. I think the bottom point here is quite important. Generally speaking, the peaks and the troughs we definitely should keep. Um, anything in the middle probably can go in most cases, but use, use your judgment. Okay, we're gonna leave these last two ones in. So I'll delete these. And it looks like we have an odd number of labels here, so we can't just skip one label every time. But what I'll do is I'll delete these, 
and then I'll do every second label. I think that looks reasonable. Um, okay, so that's the labels done. Now uh, we should do the axis labels at the same time. So I'll do the same thing to, to this Y axis, which is I'll change the format of the labels to include decimal point and a percent. Sorry, no, I'll delete the decimal point. That's not necessary. That looks good. Um, and here we have the years. So um, what I might do is I wouldn't mind having more labels here. So I'll drag that to every two years and it's auto formatted incorrectly. So I'll just do one. That looks good. Okay. Um, we should now, now actually label the axes themselves. So I'm click on the axis, right click and click add title. This is um, return on equity. Drag that to the side and I'll change the, um, the direction. Same thing on the x-axis, add title, year. And drag it down the bottom. Looks quite nice. At the moment, you can see we don't have any um, kind of legends or line labels. So it's not clear uh, what the green line and what the red line are. Uh, I think it's quite useful sometimes to have a reasonably descriptive explanation. So I have something in mind. So let's drag this across to make it a little bit smaller. And I can use some space here to describe the two lines. While we're at it, uh, what I've noticed, what I've kind of realized is it's not clear that these are actuals and then the two lines at the end are forecasts. So there's a couple of ways we can visually show that. Um, one is we can change the lines to be uh, dotted lines. I'm gonna do that now. I'll keep it at two and a half points, but I'll change it to a dash. That looks good. And um, I'm also gonna put a bit of a background in to show that uh, anything without a background is actuals, everything with a background is forecast. I'll show you what I'll do here. I'm just dropping in a shape, which is a which is wide at the moment, so you can't see it. Uh, I'll color that. Now I'll type in the word forecast. And let's just format it nicely. Uh, line at the top, italics, different color, maybe a bit of space. That looks fine. Now we'll just need to align it with the chart. So let's align that nicely. It looks pretty good actually. And bottom, cool, and the side. <clears throat> that looks good. Uh, I'm now going to send it to the back. So it's behind the chart. That was quite reasonable. Annoyingly, our last data point is 20, 2025. So, um, and our first data point actually is not 2004, it's 2005. So let's try and fix that up. And I think the reason why it's hard to do this is because the font size is a little, little bit big. So let's just reduce the font slightly. That's a bit better. So now it lines up actually quite nicely. Um, I will add a little bit more spacing here because that's a bit tight, um, but I think this one looks okay. You know what we could do in fact is we can change the format and I'll use an Excel format, which is YY and it represents a, a two digit year. Now we can see that the, the last label overlaps the edge of the forecast box. And you know, you probably could leave it like that and it'd be okay, but I'm a bit of a um, perfectionist and I want to change that. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drag the extent of the axis to one more year. There we go. So now it goes to 2026. Now I'm gonna delete this. And we have a little bit of extra spacing at the end and nothing overlaps, which is quite nice. Cool, this looks quite good now. Um, some of our labels aren't perfectly uh, aligned underneath the lines. I'll do that at the very end because if I resize the chart, Sometimes it can reset the labels and I don't want to have to deal with that again. So I'll come back to that one. So let's add in our, um, our series labels. So again, I'm just going to go insert shapes and put in a box, so the white box. That looks okay. But I think uh, one, one important technique when you're building slides is to match colors. So that's 
label these by using the colors. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop down, select the color, and I'm actually gonna make it a little bit darker. And again, I'm gonna match this bear case to the red color and make it darker. Font size is slightly different I can see now. So let's make sure I get that right. So now it's a good time to take a step back and think about what are we actually trying to show in this chart? Now, the main thing we're trying to show is the range of possible outcomes that could happen because of either digital disruption or no digital disruption. Um, so what we want to show is the potential reduction in ROI. We're saying, if you don't do anything about digital, digital disruption, then this is the ROI at risk. So I'm going to use a difference arrow to show those two things. So I'm going to right click on the last point of the chart and I'm going to click the button that says add level difference arrow. And it's connected to two strange places. I'm going to drag this anchor point down here um, and drag it across. And you can see now that um, there's potentially up to 44% of ROE at risk if uh, banks don't respond to digital disruption. So that looks quite good. Everything lines up quite nicely now. So I'm just going to drag these labels a little bit so they sit nicely. That looks better. This 4.9 belongs down here. Looks good as well. Um, overall, I'm happy with how this looks. Although I've just noticed now that our box here doesn't line up with 16 anymore. So, um, one thing I find quite tricky in ThinkSell is to grab boxes that are behind the chart is very, very hard. Like I feel like I'm clicking outside of the chart and it's still um, selecting the chart. So the trick is you can drag across and select the box because you haven't dragged across the whole chart. So now um, what I'm actually going to have to do is try and do this manually. I'm going to hold Control, Shift and press sideways, which will increase our width slightly. And now I'm just going to try and tap it over to the right position. Um, it lines up here. It's now a little bit short here. So I'm going to do the same thing until I get it right sideways. Here we go. That looks pretty good. Um, maybe just belongs one pixel across. Perfect. Uh, it's now time to label the chart. So let's uh, reuse this box, drag it over and extend it. And we'll label the chart. Um, this is global banking return on equity. Underneath, I like to have the metrics, the units, the time period uh, to make it very, very clear what we're looking at. Uh, percent 20, 2005 to 2025. And I'll format this by making it gray underneath in italics and black on top. Cool. Last thing is the slide lead in. Um, so let's have a think about what this slide is actually saying and uh, we'll use that. Some people at the top here in this, in this lead in just use the label of the data that we're looking at. So they might write something like, yeah, global banking return on equity. Now that's, I guess, useful, but it doesn't really show the insight. It requires the reader to figure out what the so what of the slide is themselves. So instead of that, let's actually just give them that. So really what we're saying here is, If banks don't address the threat of digital disruption, then almost half of their future profitability is at risk. So that's it. That's a uh, forecast slide showing two potential forecasts, a base case and a bull case. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please drop them in the comment box down below. Hope that was useful.